All right, we're getting started with today's topic. All right, you guys, we're getting started. So exciting. Thank you so much to our DJ. Hello to everyone around the country. This is the Girl Summit, How She Built It. Super excited to have you all joining us. We hope that you have your notepads out, um, that you're sitting there thinking, how am I going to start this next venture? What am I going to create? Um, you are going to hear from some amazing, amazing speakers today who started businesses as young as seven years old. So it is never too early to get started. Um, I want to first start off by saying that my name is Natalie Madeira Cofield, and I am the founder of Walker's Legacy. Named in honor of Madam C.J. Walker, Walker's Legacy was created with a mission to cultivate an ecosystem of access designed to inspire, equip, and engage a global network of professional and entrepreneurial women of color. You can learn more about Walker's Legacy by joining us online at www.walkerslegacy.com. We have an amazing lineup of featured speakers for you today, and there is no doubt that you will leave inspired and prepared. I want to start by thanking our team, Mia Sims, Skyla Green, Lana Johnson, Suli Tejeda, Jonna Bold, Rachel Wirtz, and the amazing intern army who put today's program together, Morgan Rahman, Katera Keeler, Aisha Kamara, Danielle Thomas, and Mia Ross, whose hard work has made today's summit possible, and our forthcoming entrepreneurship bootcamp. So, who runs the world? Girls! So let's go ahead and get started with today's summit. How She Built It is a one-day event that will feature five young women who are entrepreneurs of color on the fast track to success. Walker's Legacy has created this event for the purpose of showcasing the stories of these powerful young ladies as they give useful advice and motivating lectures. How She Built It will include sessions centered around what it takes to succeed as a young multicultural woman in the business world. Attendees will take part in interactive discussions addressing skills vital, vital to the success of young entrepreneurs such as leadership, self-actualization, public speaking, and self-advocacy. Our mission is for young women to leave feeling empowered and capable of achieving their wildest dreams. Walker's Legacy will continue our mission of educating young aspiring entrepreneurs with our Girls Who Enterprise program. Girls Who Enterprise is an accelerated program designed for young multicultural women in the age range of 12 to 17 that use, utilizes an original curriculum, a cohort model, and a structured learning environment to aid established business owners in advancing their business operations. Participant young entrepreneurs will partner and learn from regional leaders, professors, investors, government officials, officials and peer entrepreneurs. Through participation, you will learn and develop the important skills and resources necessary to grow and expand your endeavors. So with that being said, I will kick it off by introducing our featured panel discussion fireside chat today with Michaela Omer. Michaela is someone who is super near and dear to me. Um, I have literally watched her career blossom and grow going from selling lemonade uh, at a lemonade stand to now being sold in hundreds of stores across the country with her Be Sweet Lemonade. And she's only 15 years old. Michaela started her lemonade business as, at youth entrepreneurial events and at her lemonade stand in front of her home, donating a percentage of the profits to local and international organizations fighting hard to save the honeybee. That is why she touts, buy a bottle, save a bee. Now at age 15, her little idea from more than 10 years ago continues to grow and grow by more than 500% since the company's humble beginnings in Austin, Texas. Today, the award-winning ready-to-drink Me and the Bees Lemonade is five, has five refreshing flavors, is buzzing off the market shelves at Whole Foods, the Fresh Market, whole market, HEB stores, and across Texas at Kroger stores in Houston. It is also available at a growing number of restaurants, food retailers, and natural food delivery companies. Please join me in welcoming Michaela Ulmer to our conversation today. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Hello, good morning. 
How are you? Good morning. I'm so excited to see your beautiful face and I love those earrings. Thank you for the amazing introduction and thank you. <laughs> of course. So Michaela, as I mentioned, you know I love you and I'm so proud of you and all that you have been able to accomplish. We are joined by hundreds of young girls and their families, their parents, their moms, their dads, and your story is inspiring to people at all ages. So I'd love if you could just take a couple of minutes real quickly and just kind of talk to us about how you started in yeah. the lemonade space and how you got your start. Sure. So I started, like you said, when I was four in Austin, Texas. I saw some people were from Texas or just outside of Austin. So I live in Austin, Texas. When I was four, I signed up in the Acton Business Fair and the Austin Lemonade Day, which are both national events where kids can come up with an idea and sell their product for a day without the need of a permit. And so I signed up for these events and over the summer when I was trying to figure out what product I was going to create and sell, I got a cookbook from my great granny Helen and it had like a recipe for flaxseed lemonade in it, which I thought was interesting, but I wasn't really going to do anything with it. And then the second thing that happened was that I got stung by two bees in one week. So I became terrified of them. If anyone's been stung by a bee, definitely I'd love to see it in the chat. But I was terrified of the bees. I ha didn't want to have, like anything to do with them. And so my parents encouraged me to do some research on them. So I did like some animated videos, some picture books, but I learned that bees are incredibly important pollinators. So in case y'all didn't know, uh, they pollinate one out of every three bites of the food we eat and contribute like nearly $20 billion to the U.S agriculture each year and then the second thing I learned is that they're dying at an alarming rate and so like any kid I started a lemonade stand and I used my great granny Helen's recipe and kind of tinkered around with it a little bit sweetened the recipe with honey which I just learned that honeybees made and then donated a percentage to organizations that help the bees and this was I dressed up in a bee suit I did this maybe three times a year but I really enjoyed it. And I just would share facts with customers. And each year I like had some money left over if I like followed my budget. If I followed my budget, I had money left over and put it to the next stand. I love it. So you hear that lady, she said she followed her budget. So I'm gonna ask you a question about that a little in a little bit. But so we started at four, which is incredible. So all the parents who are watching, again, it's never too early to start started at four and now you're being sold in all these different grocers across the country what does it feel like to have your lemonade stand blow up like this like how how, how has this experience been for you it has been amazing. I didn't expect to get this, I didn't expect the product to get this large, you know. I started with the intent of maybe donating a hive and then also getting a doll that I wanted. That's why I originally started. And after the first stand, I enjoyed it, so I did it again. And when I was eight, I just, people were always asking me questions about the bees. So I started doing little workshops at different stores and organizations to uh, just teach about the bees. Kids could plant bee-friendly seeds and learn about my lemonade. And so after doing one of those workshops at Whole Foods, they said, if you can find a way to bottle your product, we'll carry it on store. And I just didn't expect to be one of those products that were bottled. So I, we started doing research on like a commercial kitchen, which is a building that produces your product. And how do you get a product that's normally in cups in bottles? And so just this journey has been really long, but I've had an amazing team of people and my family help me along the way and people like you and Sally. I love it. So Michaela, one thing we haven't talked about is the fact that you were on Shark Tank. So you just mentioned, um, you know, you started at four, I keep recapping, started at four, went into kind of some workshops. And in some regards, the workshops provided a branding opportunity, a marketing opportunity for you. Yeah. Yes. So probably gave you access to even hear from some of your potential customers on their experiences and how they liked the lemonade, correct? Mm -hmm. exactly. and, then, and then one day, poof, you know, you are invited to go and pitch before the sharks on Shark Tank. So walk us through how that process happened, how old you were, and what that experience was like. Okay, we'll do. So, so a lot of people think when you go on Shark Tank, it's just a person who comes up with an idea and then pitch it, pitches it to the sharks and then gets money to start that idea. But I had actually been running my company for 
uh, four, almost five years doing stands. And I had probably been in around 30, maybe 15 stores in Austin before I got asked by the Chamber of Commerce in Austin to audition. And so initially my parents said, no, the sharks can be brutal. We don't want your feelings getting hurt and you like not pursuing this business because you got to know. But after a little bit of convincing, they finally let me do the first audition. And it was like before we knew it, we were backstage preparing um, to actually pitch in front of the sharks. And so just some tips that I've learned is that it's really important to know your numbers. So like make sure you know how much you spend, how many stories you're in, how much you sell your product for. And so I had to review all those things before the show because they ask you those and they grill you on those. And then the second one is to practice like a pitch in public speaking. So before Shark Tank, we had been practice, I had been practicing my pitch along with my dad who went on the show with me for I think four months. And it was just a constant making sure you had it memorized, pitching in front of friends, getting their input. So I'm really looking forward to the public speaking session later today. But overall, it was an amazing experience. We landed a deal with Mr. Damon John. That was our very first like round of funding. And then more recently, we've gotten some more investment from NFL players. And that was for um, about 1.5 million. And that's as we grew the company. And you are how old again? I'm 15. <laughs> I had to ask again. She said 1.5 mil and she's 15. So this is awesome. So Michaela, let's get into some of the technicalities around like, you know, we're talking about creating a budget. We're talking about knowing your numbers. We've been talking about product development, marketing, things of that nature that sometimes those words feel very um, grown up. They feel yeah. very innocent. And how did you go through the process of kind of learning about that, learning about the business behind your, your hobby and your passion? So how did I learn about the process? How did I learn about like business terminology? Yeah, like talk to us yeah. about not just the terminology, but also like knowing that when you were doing market research, you were knowing that you were doing market research or knowing that when you were working in a commercial kitchen, you were using products that you had an entire system. I mean, I know that you know this, mm -hmm. uh, but you have an entire system on how you were putting your stuff together. You even know about supply chain and distribution, things of that nature that at that age, at any age period, is something that can seem very daunting for people. So yes. for that young girl that's 12 years old on the call right now that's making anything, like a widget, how would you kind of talk to her about building a little more structure around her endeavor? Well, the first thing I would say is even though it may seem daunting, it's it's not daunting at all it's very easy like you can you can learn these things and the thing is is that maybe adults or people around you say like it's for adults you have to wait till you grow up to do this kind of things but literally four-year-olds are doing it when you start a lemonade stand you become an entrepreneur when you're like exchanging um, money you're learning about like counting change and about mathematics and things like that even when you're in school for example English you're learning how to um, like write nicely so you can do presentations and things like these so it's it's all intertwined and it's not as daunting as you think when you start when you come up with an idea and try selling it to people even if it doesn't work or if it fails you're still learning things along the way so what i'm saying is whether it's cosmetics i saw in the chat whether it's cosmetics or lemonade like me you can do it but it takes practice you want to you know listen to podcasts or read books but try to learn just learn as much as you can and learn along the way i love it and what would you what advice would you give to people about the experience of kind of getting your product into a, a whole like a, into a wholesale for example like you have your lemonade distributed at, at companies from HEB to whole mm -hmm. foods Wegmans at, at one point so talk to us about what that experience was like how did you and your and your mom and dad go about doing that for the parents that are on the line got it so it was a very gradual process we started producing in the kitchen with a handheld squeezer then we upgraded to an electric juicer then we upgraded to like a another juicer then we upgraded to a commercial kitchen which is where a place that you can rent the space out and produce your product in a large batches and then we upgraded to a co-packer who 
who create who makes the products themselves in really big vats and then you can sell it to other customers so it was kind of just upgrading along the way as we needed to grow what i would recommend is to start locally just as i did i started locally um i sold first to people in austin and then through word of mouth more stores picked me up i pitched to store so i actually you know brought product i had a business card that i printed from one of those AV pr printouts and like a one pager of the product, which I designed, uh, I think it was on Canva or something. But I would go and pitch to different stores that I wanted to carry my product. And through that, some people said yes, some people said no. But for those who said yes, if the product did well, then they would tell other stores or other stores would see it and pick it up as well. So it's a very, it's a very gradual thing, but you learn along the way. And then also, um, I guess I just grew by starting small and then getting bigger. I love it. So one of the things that you mentioned was that people told you no. And in yeah. business, in life, and as we grow up, um, throughout our, the entirety of our life, we're going to hear no's. Um, we had a chance to interview the CEO of the Girl Scouts, Sylvia Acevedo, and she talks about the fact that when they train the Girl Scouts to go out and sell their cookies, they tell them, you hear no three times before you give up. And even after you hear the third one, you keep going. And so talk to us about how you overcame some of those no's because there's someone on the, on, uh, that's watching us today that has experienced their first no and that may just have been enough for them. They're like, I can't do this anymore and I told you this wasn't a good idea even though I know it's a good idea. Talk to us about a no that maybe you've experienced and how you overcame that, Michaela. Sure. So uh, this is what I'm going to go in depth about, but on Shark Tank, we got no from all the sharks but Damon. And so we were kind of just waiting in anticipation. Like he said, one person said, you're too small. The business is too small. Another person said, um, maybe if you drop out of school, I like my investees to be full time. And so for those no's, you, gotta, you have to realize whether it aligns with your mission and why you started. So I started as a kid so I can inspire other kids to become entrepreneurs. And so if someone says no because, uh, I like donate too much of my profits or because I'm still in school, I'm like, that's not a no that I'm even going to consider a no because it's not for my product and it doesn't align with like my mission and why I got started. So that's one way. You have to always question why they say no. Uh, and so you can use that, maybe change it in your next pitch. And then for me, I guess one of my no's or challenges was after I went on Shark Tank, there was a company that called and said, um, like, our, your name is too similar to ours. You can either borrow it or change it. You could either borrow it for a couple million dollars or change it all together. And so as a 10 year old, I didn't have a couple million dollars to borrow a name. And so we initially fought back, but it was a really big thing and the company was established before us. So we decided to change our name, but use the name changing to our advantage and kind of just launch a new brand that still reflected my product. I love it. Michaela, at 15, you've had so many different business experiences. It's absolutely incredible. Um, you've talked, again, you've talked to us about marketing. You've talked to us about product development and design. You've talked to us about product distribution. You've talked to us about partnerships. you talked to us about pitching and presenting for investors, financing and funding for your small business. And obviously, the last thing we just talked about was perseverance. Um, Talk to us a little bit about some of the products that you have. So I know I have yeah. my kits. And in fact, my, my lips today, I have a little of the Me and the Bees lip chat <laughs> on. Okay. <laughs> I did that just for you. So I can let you know I'm wearing your lip chat today. <laughs> Me too. So tell everybody. <laughs> so you started with lemonade. And, and obviously you've made lemonade out of lemons. But talk to us about what else you're making out of those uh, bees and things of that nature. Sure. So we started with lemonade. I will bottle back here. <laughs> but we started with the lemonade. This is the prickly pear flavor. And so I started with flaxy lemonade that's sweetened with honey and like tastes good and does good. And so then we started with the one flavor that was mint. Then we grew to prickly pear, which is a cactus in Texas, a ginger flavored lemonade, a half and half iced tea and lemonade, 
and then a classic. And all those did really well. But my goal has, like, for the business to be the Hello Kitty of lemonade. So I wanted to create new products and come up with new things. So we started doing shirts. So, like, this is a BV shirt. And then also lip balms, like beeswax lip balms. And I'm not exactly sure what other like products I want to create but currently it's the lemonade and the lip balm. Awesome I love it. Okay so Michaela uh, one of the things um, my second to last question for you is around you talked about the lemonade you talked about the lip the, the lip the lip chap or chapstick yes. um, you have some other swag items a little t-shirt I got a pencil and stuff in my bag <laughs> uh, but in addition to that I hear that there's a, a book is, is yes. there a book? There is a book? book. Awesome. Okay, talk to us about this book. And okay. do you have it around you? Because your mom asked me. Maybe my, we I might do. have to be. Okay, show I us do. the book. Be Fearless is the book by Michaela Almer. We're on pre-order and pre-sale right now for that book. Is that correct? Dream yes. Like a Kid. Yes, so it's called Be Fearless, Dream Like a Kid. I'm publishing it on August 18th with Penguin Random House. And so this book is for anyone who maybe was inspired by our interaction and our Q&A today and like want to do something in life, whether it's nursing or come up with a business or be a better student, but maybe don't know how. So the first thing that I talk about is my story of starting me and the bees in depth because I'm always asked questions about like, how do you do this? Or what was the process before you even were asked to, to get on Shark Tank that you came up with your pitch? So I talk about going through and running the company or what was it like introducing former President Obama? This is kind of my story and my journey of me and the bees. And then it's also a like business guide. So I talk about how we create a budget or like the four P's of marketing, price, promotion, things like that. And then also just kind of tips and advice that I've learned along the way. So if you guys are readers, or even if you're not, if you're audiobook listeners, I just finished recording the audiobook narration of this book. And uh, it's available now for pre-order, and you can be one of the first people who read it when it comes out in August. Okay, so I have to ask you to read a little bit of chapter eight. <laughs> okay. Mom and I talked about that yesterday. So <laughs> I'm beyond elated. When I read a little of it, I was crying. But I just want to up here a couple of things that Michaela just kind of slid in there. Mm -hmm. uh, introducing President Obama, for which I had the honor of watching you on stage, and I was crying watching you because I'm so proud of you. I mean, you have been you have been so wildly successful, and this is just the beginning of all that will come for you. So why don't we go ahead and hear a little bit of chapter eight. Okay. So chapter eight it is, here you go, you guys can have a sleep peek. It's from Austin to Hollywood. And this is, it's not the final copy. So um, it says, early on when I was still selling my lemonade at a stand in my front yard, I met a woman who would forever change the course of my business. Natalie Cofield was the CEO of the Greater Austin Black Chamber of Commerce. She was good at reaching out to the business leaders of our community and even better at connecting them with, good op with big opportunities. So in March 2014, Miss Natalie called me up and said she was holding auditions for ABC's hit show Shark Tank at the Chamber of Commerce's office and was interested. I was excited, but my parents were concerned and quickly intervened. Thank you, my mom said politely. But we are way too small for Shark Tank. Plus, my parents felt the panel of investors. Plus, my parents felt the panel of investors that they had seen on television could sometimes be tough on the entrepreneurs who came on the show, and they didn't want to put their nine-year-old daughter through that. Miss Natalie understood. So this is just like the start of my journey, but each chapter is something else. So this one is from Austin to Hollywood. This one is life after national television. So it talks about me like kind of growing with the demand of my product. And then there's even one about me coming up with the idea in the first place and how you can come up with your own brilliant idea. I love it, Michaela. I love it. I love your products and I love you. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Thank, Thank you so you. much for all that you're doing. Uh, it is. It has been Knowing you and your family has been one of the highlights of my professional career. I will tell you that. And every success that I see that you continue to achieve is something that I look at and say, wow, you know, it, it was, it, it, it has been an honor to be able to be connected to you 
and what you and your family are doing in even the slightest way. And I hope that all that have watched today are really feeling super empowered and super excited about what it means to take your dream and turn it into reality. And listen, ladies, we're just getting started. This is just the first speaker. If she's a powerhouse, this is just the first speaker. So Michaela, I'm gonna thank you so much for joining us. Again, tell us where we can get the book and how we can get the book. Cause I wanna make sure that everybody picks these books up and picks these products up. Yes, so the book is available on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. And then also there's another site called IndieBound. And if you'd like more information, because there's a bunch of things like Target and Walmart and Hudson's who are also selling the book. So if you'd like to see where you can get that, you can literally just search up like Be Fearless or Michaela Ulmer book and it, hopefully it should pop up. And then uh, what was your fir the first part of your question? Oh, how to get the book and where to uh, get the products. And, got and it. Michaela, if you have two seconds, we have three questions. So I want to make sure we get to those if that's okay. okay. And I've also been like keep recording some of the questions that I've seen throughout the chat. But the product is, I'm very happy to say the product is available in the 1800 stores. So it may not be in a store near you, but if you have a Whole Foods or an HEB or a Fresh Market or a Cost Plus World Market near you, then you can pick it up there. And then if you'd like to see like specific what specifically what stores near you, on my website, there's a where to buy page. You can actually like type in your zip code and it'll tell you near you where you can get the product. So let me know what you think. I have social media and I love seeing people's favorite flavor. It's a heated debate, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here, here are the three questions. Okay, so uh, Nina Porter says, how long did it take for you to come up with your name? And I know you mentioned that you also changed it, but how long did it take for you to come up with your first name and possibly the second one? Ooh, B Sweet. How long did it take me? Do you remember how long it took me to come up with B Sweet? No. <laughs> I I don't remember. I think I just liked B Sweet because it was a pun and I have always loved B puns. Like for for example, throughout the book, we have little things called buzziness ideas. But I liked it because like the bees, that's what I was saving. So I was teaching about the bees and donating to organizations who were, self, who were helping the bees. And then sweet because my product was sweetened like by bees who made honey. So that's probably why I called it bee sweet. And I don't people remember. Be sweet and save the bees. Yeah, and I also wanted people to be sweet and save the bees. My second name took a little longer. We ha originally came up with like hundreds of names from Feisty Bee to Grandma's Bees Lemonade. But uh, we narrowed it down and like for the name and the branding, it was about uh, like maybe four months or three months. And we had already had B-Suite established. We just needed to come up with the new name. And you had business cards. I mean, you were official. You were <laughs> official. You had your marketing and swag. Okay. So we've answered that question. Next question is, how big do you want to grow your company through throughout your life? You know, is this only a, a, a passion for you? Like, have you kind of gotten to a space where you're like, this is probably as big as I want to take it? Uh, you don't know yet? Or are you like, the sky, the sky is the limit? I'm not sure. I'm just kind of still taking it day by day. This is definitely not the only thing that I want to do. I may want to, like, create new companies. I, I'm going into junior year of high school, so... That's going to be very fun. And then also college, not exactly sure what I want to study. Maybe something along the lines of business, but not exactly like sure what section or what subject. So for the company, I still want to continue growing it. I would like it to become like a national household name. So I want everyone to hear me and the bees and I want everyone to be inspired to like um, to be inspired to become a social entrepreneur and then also to learn a little bit more about the bees. And, and then... Excuse me? They will be inspired. <laughs> and then the second thing is uh, either, you know, become a serial entrepreneur. That has always been so much fun to me is like coming up with the idea and starting up. That has been the most fun for me. And then possibly maybe being an investor and investing in other minority run or female run or black owned businesses because like so much so little of funding is allocated to that category, that demographic. So I would like to make growing their own businesses a little bit easier. I love it. And as Maria Hamlin just said, nothing but respect. Okay. 
Um, so we've answered that question. Uh, two more is, was it hard making sales? And this is from Christiana Moses. Mm. So in the beginning it was because I was nervous to like shout out lemonade anyone in front of the stand because I was afraid people would say no and then there's kind of that awkward moment of them walking by because they didn't want my lemonade but it was it was kind of just being like the worst thing that they can say is no and decline the product so you might as well take as many shots and try to get as many customers as you can get and for the like once we were in stores and we were trying to get sales from individual chains, it was uh, it was hard if you weren't prepared. You had to prepare what press had covered what press had covered my lemonade, what flavors we had, what were the benefits. You're kind of bragging about your product. So once you're prepared and once you believe in whatever product that you have, it's easier to get sales because they're going to be excited to bring it on and kind of be a change maker as well. Got it. Love it. And lastly, uh, someone asked, how were you able to balance finances at such a young age? Balance finances. So I think the time that I really get to spend on the company is during summer or during breaks. I do travel for me and the bees throughout the school year. But we have actually, I don't do the finances. We have sales. We have teams that manage each part of the company. So as CEO, I over... I guess I oversee each of those teams. There's operations, there's brokers who go into the stores and make sure that the product is like pulled up to the front of the shelves. There's marketing and uh, PR. And then there's also finances who just make sure that the balance sheets are correct or the income statements, etc. So it's pretty much just making sure that everything is running smoothly and learning what I can and asking questions from each team along the way. I love and it. Can I just answer uh, two more questions that I saw? Yeah, sure. Which ones do you want to answer? Okay, so one was what a business card looks like. And okay. that one's really easy because there's so many examples. If you look at Avery business card templates, there's great examples of a good business card. Watch YouTube videos. And then also go on Canva, which is a free graphic design site. And you can look at business card examples there. And then the second one that I'd like to answer is, how do you keep being successful? And I, I guess I want to answer that because success isn't, like, isn't judged by other people. It's kind of judged by you. So you can determine what makes yourself successful. And personally, I think it's that like you're happy or you're, you're content or you're kind of growing and learning along the way. So I guess how do I keep on being successful is like I, I keep on being curious I have a really short attention span, so I just focus from things like science to business all along the way, but I enjoy it, and I'm always learning. So I think that's how. And then, Michaela, just talk to us a little bit about the role that your parents have played in helping to support you entrepreneurially, because that's also a question that I see here. Um, yeah. you know, obviously, there is this moment where it's like, focus on school, focus on business, and you know, I know how involved your parents have been in, in this process with you. Talk to us about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, they have played such a huge role, whether it was encouraging me to do the research about the bees in the very beginning, to pitching with me on Shark Tank, to helping run the company while I'm at school. They have played a huge role. And so if there are any parents that are watching this, I know this is a girl summit, but if there are any parents of girls who are watching this, I'd like to say to... Them, like when someone comes up and says I have an idea or when someone comes up and asks a question continue sparking that curiosity don't say like what do you want to be when you grow up say what are you interested in or what change do you want to make or what do you enjoy doing and then when someone maybe has come to you with that idea ask them questions go look online you know go to your library or go to stores and figure out how you can help I guess foster what it is because I think one of the most important things that they've helped me with is realizing that I don't have to wait till I get older and that it's a, all a, a family thing or just finding mentors. I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. We are going to conclude this portion of today's conversation. Again, thank you, Michaela, for joining us for our How She Built It, A Girl's Summit. Michaela, why don't you go ahead and put that book up one more time just so okay. we can make sure that everybody sees the Be Fearless book. 
which is on pre-order right now. Michaela Ulmer is the founder and CEO of Me and the Bees, uh, which is a widely distributed uh, lemonade, bottled lemonade company that also has a number of other products. Uh, from what I heard, Michaela, you said you're in almost or more than 1,800 stores across the country. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. All right. And as part of today's events, we will be doing several giveaways from each of our featured speakers. And so now I'd like to turn it over to Katera to announce our first giveaway from Michaela. Hi, ladies. I hope you enjoyed our first session of the day as much as I did. It was a pleasure to just hear Michaela give such an educational and motivating message. Be sure to get that book. Our first giveaway comes from Bees Lemonade. The prize is lip balm and lemonade coupons. I just used a random number generator and will now announce our lucky first winners of the day. We will be in touch via email with all winners after today's summit. So drum roll, please. Our winners are Yasmin Chestnut, Jordan Benjamin, Sydney Daniel, Alicia Lee, Mackenzie Young, Kai Strange, Harmony Brown, Jennifer Okusan, Sophia Lowe, and Kennedy Solaro. Congratulations to our first winners of the day. Now we'll enjoy a quick DJ break from uh, with DJ the Radio Bell. Thank you.